Hello, thank you so much for choosing to serve on your school's community council or trust land council. In this video, I will review the stewardship of your position. Each council has a membership of parents, school employees, and the school principal. In all councils, parent members must exceed the number of school employees by at least two members. All council positions have a unique responsibility. The principal oversees elections, enters council membership on the School Land Trust Reporting website, and completes the principal's assurance. The principal's assurance affirms that the council's elections followed the bylaws set in the council's rules of order and procedure, unfilled positions were filled by appointment, and the school community council's bylaws or procedures comply with code and rule. After council elections have been held, a chair and vice chair will be elected. Once these positions have been filled, the chair's responsibilities are to set meeting agendas, conduct meetings and keep written minutes, inform council members about resources on the School Land Trust website, welcome and encourage public participation, refer to the yearly timeline, bring rules of order and procedure for review and adoption, and delegate to the other council members. Throughout the year, there are many responsibilities the council will see to. At the first council meeting, the rules of order and procedure should be reviewed and adopted. Council members should be active participants in conversations regarding the school and its programs, school district programs, discussion of the child access routing plan, which is commonly known as the safe walking route, student safety plans, and any other issues related to the community environment for students. Another responsibility of the council is to prepare the school land trust plan. In late winter or early spring, the council will work together to create the annual school land trust plan. When creating the plan, there are steps to be followed. First, review the student data. Where are the students currently at and how are they performing? Discussions of data will naturally lead to the second step of determining the greatest academic need and what areas need the most focus. Third, by using the data and focus area, the council will create a student-centered academic goal to answer the question, where would you like your students to be in one year? Last, decide what resources are needed to help students achieve the goal. For elementary schools, the areas of academic need that receive first consideration are math, science, and English or language arts, which also include reading. In secondary schools, the areas of academic need to receive first consideration include college and career readiness and graduation rate increase, in addition to math, science, and English or language arts. After the first of the year, we will provide more detailed training on the annual school land trust plan. In the meantime, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you for supporting the School Land Trust Program.